All right, let's get back to the deadly flash floods in central Texas as the death toll is topping 80. The National Weather Service has been criticized for its response. And our meteorologist Kevin Jeans here now with a look at the timeline of the warnings issued and just how fast those water levels climb, Kevin. Yeah, so I'm going to look at the, how fast the waters climb. There's also been criticism to the National Weather Service, too. So I'm, I'm really just going to scratch the surface here. Okay. Um, but, you know, it's the, the unfortunate uh, reality is there's always the blame game after a tragedy like this happens. So I want to shed just a little bit of light on the timeline and some of the alerts that were issued. So this is a map of the rain totals. This is from July 3rd and July 4th. So July 3rd, Thursday night, the flooding really ramped up early Friday morning and the heavy rain lasted until about noon Friday. So most of this flooding was early Friday morning. So this is Thursday morning, shortly after 10 a.m. The Weather Prediction Center, Center, they issued a level two out of four for excessive rain for central Texas. And then later on that afternoon, shortly after 1 p.m., a flood watch was issued from the National Weather Service with the mention of five to seven inches of rain possible, which is a lot of rain. And, and the quoting, uh, the verbiage of excessive runoff may result in flooding of rivers, creeks, and streams. They were also uh, having uh, meetings and, and uh, giving um, uh, at least alerts to emergency management crews in the morning and afternoon on Thursday leading up to this event. Weather Prediction Center then increased Thursday evening around 6 p.m., increasing concern for the potential of three inches per hour of rain. And then finally, you get past midnight. Now the heavy rain has started here after 1 a.m. Flash flood warning was issued with a considerable tag, which triggered the alerts to cell phones. The problem is not much cell service, if any, out there. We're talking about Camp Mystic, which is about 14 miles west of Kerrville. Here's the river gauge. I'm going to show you the river. 1:10 a.m. The river level 7.7 feet, moving nine cubic feet per second. Look what happened by 4:30. I want you to look at the water flow. 120,000 cubic feet per second. So picture cubic uh, foot just as a basketball, roughly one by one. Uh, it's 120,000 basketballs moving per second. That's how much water was moving and the water level nearly 30 feet in just a matter of hours there. So that's how quickly the water levels rose. And at uh, 3.30 and at 4 a.m. it was upgraded to a flash flood emergency, particularly dangerous situation, moved to higher ground now. So the alerts were there. I think the big problem here is that a lot of the alerts were not received because of the lack of cell service. That's where NOAA weather radios can really come into play there. So they did have extra staffing at the National Weather Service office. They've been talking about the funding. They had staffing there that night, uh, but th it's a very difficult situation to predict in mesoscale convective vortexes, it's MCVs. That's what they had. Difficult to predict more than a few hours out and tropical moisture led to historic flooding. So there's a deeper conversation to be had here about overuse of some flash flood warnings and whether or not people are paying enough attention and taking action when there are flash flood warnings like this issued. That's a deeper conversation, but this was the overview. The alerts were there. I think the, the receiving the alerts was the difficult part from this one.